Be seated. All right, any issues before? Well, I guess one issue is we need the state prosecutors, yes. All right. <laughs> it's hard for them to call witnesses unless they're here. All right, are they? Here they come. If I may, Your Honor, use the phone very quickly. You may. Thank you. Line up our witnesses outside. All right, are we ready for the jury? Mr. Rosenwasser? Yes, Your Honor. Very good. All right, let's bring them in. Very good. Thank you, Deputy. State, please call your next witness. The state would call Brittany Jacobs. Good afternoon. Can you please turn to the jury and state your name and spell your first and last name for the court reporter? Brittany Jacobs, um, B R I T A N Y J A C O B S. All right. And how old are you today? 26. Um, I'm going to turn your attention back to July 19, 2018. Back during that time frame, were you working somewhere? Yes. Where was it that you were working? East Bay Nursing Rehab Center. Okay. And what, what type of job did you have? I was a certified nursing assistant. Uh, I'm assuming you had to go to school for that, correct? Yes. All right, and where'd you go to school? SPC. And what type of place was East Bay Rehab? It was a nursing rehab center with dementia patients. And uh, so you're a certified nur nursing assistant there? Yes. Okay. Uh, back then, what were your hours? 7 to 3. Okay, when you say 7 to 3, is that 7 a.m. to 3 p.m.? Yes. Now, do you work there today? No. All right, what are you doing these days? Taking care of my kids. All right. How many kids do you have? Four. Do you know someone by the name of Marquise McLaughlin? Yes. And how long had you known Marquise McLaughlin for? For 10 years. And, and who was he to you? He was my soulmate and my partner. Um, how was it that y'all met? Um, through a mutual friend, through high, um, Benny High School. Did Marquise work? Yes. And we're obviously talking about during this period of time. Where did Marquise work? At 7-Eleven. What did Marquise do at 7-Eleven? He was a cashier. How, um, you know what his hours were? 10 to 7. Okay. Did he work 10 a.m. or 10 p.m.? Um, 10 p.m. So 10 p.m. to 7 a.m.? Yes. Um, when you were at work, who was responsible for taking care of the kids? Marquise. So back then, how many kids did you have? I had three. All right. And now you have four? Yes. All right. Were you pregnant at the time this was happening? Yes. Okay. And when I say this was happening, back on July 19th? Yes. Um, did you know you were pregnant? No. Um, when you were at work, Marquise would watch the kids? Yes. And then when you came home, was it then your time to take care of the kids? Yes. And then Marquise would go to his job at around 10 o'clock? Correct. When would he try to sleep? During the time he dropped me off. On July 19th of 2018, uh, were you working on that day? Yes. How was it that you got to work at East Bay Rehab? He dropped me off. Marquise okay. dropped me off. Then he went back home, presumably with kids? Yes. After your shift was over, did he come to pick you up? Yes. When he came to pick you up, uh, did he continue driving, or did you all switch seats and, and you drove? We switched and I drove. Where did you go? Did you go anywhere on the way home? Yes. Where did you go on your way home from work? We stopped at the Circle A. And that's at uh, uh, Sunset Point Road? Yes. At, here in Pinellas County? Yes. When it, you got to that location, did you pull into a particular spot? Yes. Right. Let's talk about that store. Have you been to that store before? Yes, I go there all the time. Been there for years. Okay. And when you say you, is it both you and Marquise would go to that store? Yes. Did you have any family that lived nearby? Yes. Uh, what, what family lived near that store? I have my side of family and he had his side of the family. 
Um, were you close to your side of the family? Yes. Is he close with his family? Yes. One of the reasons why you'd always go to that store? Yes. Now, you've been going to that store for years? Yes. Have you, on occasion, or frequently, seen people park in the handicap spot? Yes, all the time. And people that weren't handicapped? Right. All right and we're not, saying whether the, you know, we're not saying that's right, but that's just what you've seen? Yes. When you pulled into the Circle A parking lot, what spot did you take? The handicap spot. Um, should you have parked there? No. Um, what was the purpose of going to the store that day? It was just to run in the store, grab some snacks, and come out. Who was it that was going to go run into the store and grab those snacks? Marquise and little Marquise. All right. So let's talk about who was in that car during that period of time. So obviously it was you. Yes. Uh, Marquise McLaughlin. Yes. You said little Marquise. So how old is little Marquise? He was five. Anyone else in the car? Yes. Who else was in the car? My two other babies. I had a five-year-old, Marley. No, I'm sorry, a three-year-old, Mar Marley, and my six-month-old baby, Marshawn. Um, so uh, we'll call him Big Marquise and Little Marquise get out of the car to go into the store. Is that correct? Yes. Right. Did you plan on spending a half hour there? No. How long do you think you all were going to be there? Just a quick second, just in and out. Um, obviously, you stayed with the car? Yes. Did you get out at any time to walk away from the car? No. Um, did you plan on getting out of the car and leaving to go anywhere? No. What was the reason that you stayed with the car? Just in case if somebody did pull up and needed that spot. If someone needed that spot, let's say that uh, someone was handicapped came up, would you move the car? Yes. You would have moved the car? Yes, I would have moved the car. Did you watch Big Marquise and Little Marquise go into the store? Yes. When you were there, did you see someone park their car and approach you? Yes. That person that parked the car and approached you, did you know that person at that time? No. Did you see that person approach your vehicle? Yes. Right. And again, it's you and the two kids at this time, correct? Correct. When this person approaches you, was it a male or a female? A male. Was it a white male or a black male? White male. All right. Did you keep your eye on him? Yes. All right. What did that white male do at that time? He started walking around the car. He started from the driver's side, started from the back, started from the passenger side, and stopped at the front. Um, could you see him doing anything with his hands? Yes, he started pointing. And uh, tell the jury, who was he pointing at? He started pointing at me. Were you concerned at, any, at that point? Yes, I was scared. All right. What, you know, what were you thinking? I didn't know who this strange, suspicious man was. I didn't know. Could you hear him say anything to you through the through your windows? No. Um, could you see his, his his lips moving, his mouth moving? Yes. All right. So he was saying things, but at this point you couldn't hear what he was saying. Correct. And you said that he was doing what with his hands? He was pointing. Did there come a point in time when you you put your window down? Yes, I cracked it. All right. So you didn't put your window down all the way? No. When you put your window down, did uh, this white male walk away? No. The white male that we're talking about, instead of referring to him as the white male, the person that we're talking about, do you see him in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you please point to him and identify him by some articles of clothing that he's wearing? He's wearing uh, um, a suit, a dark blue suit. And what color uh, shirt is he wearing? Um, a light blue. Okay. May the record reflect the witnesses identified the defendant, Michael Draco? It shall sort of reflect. So... The defendant approaches your car, and you said you put your window down. I cracked it. You cracked it. So did uh, the defendant keep saying things to you? Yes. All right, so what did you hear him saying? He told me that um, you're parked in the handicap spot. I said, yes, I am aware. When my family returns to the car, I will leave. Okay. Um, did you ask him if there's a handicapped person there that needed a spot or anything like that? No. Um, did the defendant say anything to you uh, else? Did he, did he stop then or did he keep? He kept going. He says, people that park here, I give problems to all the time. Okay, so he said he gives problems to people that park in that spot. Correct. Right. Did that make you feel any better? No. All right. Uh, now, how was he having this conversation with you now? Was he having it like you and I or was it different? 
It was different. All right, how was it different? Tell the jury. He was more angry and uh, aggressive. Okay, how so? What was he doing? What was aggressive about him? He was yelling and pointing and telling me where I should park. Because of the way that he was with you, what did you do? Did you respond to him? We kept going back and forth. Okay, did you raise your voice at some point in time? Yes. All right. Um, were you getting loud with him? Yes. All right. And, and tell the jury, why was it that you were now getting loud? Because I just wanted this man to just leave me alone, just leave me and my babies alone. Would you say that this became heated at some point? Yes. Okay. Um, when you told the defendant that you wanted him to leave you alone, did he just back up and leave you alone? No. Did he get in his car and drive away? No. Did he back up and, and do anything at all? No, he just kept arguing with me. Okay. And was he still yelling at you? Yes. Okay. Was he doing anything with his hands? Yes. What was he doing with his hands? Still pointing. Did you want him to be there? No. Did there come a point in time when you wanted to do something so that the defendant wasn't going to be there? Yes, I wanted to push him away. I just wanted him to just leave me and my babies alone. All right, let's talk about that. Did you communicate that to the defendant? No. Okay. Did you ever say to him, you know, leave me alone or I'm going to come out and I'm going to start, you know, taking your butt? No. Did you ever say to him, if you don't leave me alone, um, I'm going to get out and I'm going to do something to you? No. Ever threaten him? No. Um, at this point that we're talking about, is uh, Marquise McLaughlin inside the store? Yes. Okay. Did you get out of the car at any time when Marquise McLaughlin was in the store? No. So everything that we just talked about was a thought that you were having in your own head? Correct. All right. Never verbalized to the defendant at all? No. Is there something that you said to the defendant to let him know there were other people with you? Yes. All right. Tell the jury what it is that you said. I said, do you want me to get my man? And I said that as in, okay, maybe he'll leave me alone. Maybe he'll back off if you know I have somebody with me. Okay. So you were telling him that because you still wanted him to go away from your car? Yes. Obviously, you didn't want him there. Right. So you told him to leave you alone. Right. Did he leave you alone? No. When you told him about you had your man there, the reason you did that was for him to leave you alone? Yes. Did he leave you alone? No. What did he continue to do? He kept arguing with me, and he said yes if you, if, um, he, if you want him to fight. Okay. Now, let's just talk about that. Who said that? Draco. Okay. So, now, you didn't know his name back when this happened, right? No. All right. So after this, you learned what his name was. Right. Okay. So, what is it that the defendant said to you after you were talking about your man? I told him, do you want me to go get my man? And he said, yes, if you want him to fight. Okay, so the person who brought up fight first was the defendant. Correct. Right. Um, now, at this point in time, are, are, are you saying anything to him? Are you threatening him? No. All right. At any time, do you threaten him? No. Okay. Is there a point in time when Marquise uh, comes out of the store? Yes. Now, let me ask you this. Were there other people that were pulling into the parking lot when this was happening? Yes. Volume-wise, you I mean, and the defendant going back and forth, loud, quiet? It was loud. Everybody is noticing by this time. Okay. So the people that were in the parking lot, could you see them looking over in your direction? Yes. Was there a point in time when Marquise McLaughlin came out of the store? Yes. While he was in the store, still loud outside? Yes. When Marquise came out, did you see him start coming down the sidewalk? Yes. At the time that Marquise first comes out of the store, is the defendant still near your car? Yes, and he's and, still pointing. Okay, still pointing at you. Um, at the time that Marquise first comes out of the store, are you inside your car still? Yeah. Do you see Marquise coming down the sidewalk? Yes. Is there a point in time when you get out of your car? Yes. What's the reason that you got out of the car? Because I didn't know what was going to happen. And if anything bad was going to happen, it was going to happen outside the car and not inside the car with the babies. Did you have any idea what would happen from the moment you got out of the car? No. Did you have any idea, and I, I know it sounds like an obvious question, that uh, Marquise McLaughlin was going to be shot? No. Did you have any idea that Marquise was going to 
push the defendant. No. When you got out of the car and the defendant's right there, what's the distance between the two of you? And by two of you, I mean you and the defendant. It was a good distance. Okay. Um, I mean, was he 10 feet away or was the defendant close by? Was he, you know, five feet away? Nine feet away. Okay. The, from the defendant, not Mark Keys, the okay. defendant. Right. Okay. So it was when a... uh, Marquise is coming closer, where's the defendant in relation to you? We were separated. It was a distance. Okay. So you, you and the defendant weren't right face to face? No. Okay. Um, did there come a point in time when uh, Marquise was very close? Yes. Did Marquise say anything to the defendant? Yes. Okay. Uh, what did you hear him say? He said, get away from my girl. And what did Marquise do at that point? Push Michael Draca down. All right. At the point that he pushed Michael Draca, did he push him farther away from you? Yes. Because he was closer to you before that, obviously. Correct. When Marquise pushed the defendant down, just prior to that, did you make any moves towards the defendant? No. Okay, were you going to go attack him? No. Um, had you threatened the defendant at that point anyway? No. What were you doing? Just standing there? I was retreating. Everybody was. Okay. Well, let's, let's talk about that. When the, the defendant fell on the ground, what did you see him do? He pulled his gun. Did you have a clear view of that? Yes. I'm talking about prior to this now, prior to the defendant taking out his gun. Did you take any steps or do anything towards the defendant? No. Once that gun came out, what did you do? I retreated to the left. Okay. And would that be towards the back of your car or the front of your car? To the back. Did you have an opportunity to see what Marquise was doing once that firearm came out? He was treating also. He was backing up, and he couldn't back up no farther because the car was there. Okay. So you had a clear view of that? Yeah. When the gun came out, did you hear Marquise say anything to the defendant? There was silence. Okay. And by silent, does that mean that the defendant wasn't saying anything to Marquise as well? Everybody was quiet. Okay. So once the push happened, there was silence? Yes. So you indicated that the defendant took the firearm out and Marquise was going backwards? Yes. Okay. And I think he indicated this, but could he keep going backwards? No. Why not? The car was there. Did you see where Marquise went after he went backwards? Towards the car. Okay, backwards towards the car? Yes. Um, what was the defendant doing at that point in time? He was aiming a gun. I mean, aiming at Marquise. Okay. And did the defendant shoot Marquise? Yes. Was that after Marquise went backwards? Yes. Prior to that shot being fired, did Marquise go forwards at all? No. Okay, just went backwards, that's it. Yes. Did you see whether or not Marquise um, did anything else? Yeah, he had hold his side, and he went towards the store. Okay, so once the shot was fired, you saw Marquise grab his side? Yes. Okay. When you saw Marquise go inside, what was the next thing that happened? I seen Marquise down there fighting for his life. So I grabbed a t-shirt and I put it toward his wound and stopped the, the bleeding. Okay, let me take you just uh, back a little bit. So you're outside when the shot's fired, is that correct? Right. And you see Marquise run into the store. Right. Um, do you go directly into the store or do you do something first? I do something first. All right, tell the jury what you did first. I run around the other side, or the passenger side. I wind the window up. Made sure the kids were safe. I locked the door, and I ran in after Marquise. Okay. When you ran inside after Marquise, uh, were there any other customers inside the store? Yes. Uh, male, female, do you remember? It was a female. Did that female help you in any way? Yes. All right. So let's tell the jury what happens. You come inside. Where do you see Mar Marquise? He's down on the ground. And what do you see? He's fighting for his life. Is Marquise Jr. still in the store? Yes. When that lady's with you, what does she help you do? She just gave me a shirt. Okay. And what did you do with that shirt? I put it on Marquis's wound. Um, at any point, did you call 911? Yes. Now, did you stay in the store the entire time? I had to run out because by this time, I was um, worried about my kids because the armed man was still out there. 
So I ran in my car, I pulled in in the front, I turned the AC on, I locked the door, and I ran back inside by Marquis' side. And I stood there until the ambulance came. Did you move your car because you didn't want the police to see where it was parked? No. All right, what was the purpose of you moving that car? So I can keep an eye on my babies and Marquis. Okay. So the kids were still in the car this whole time? Yes. The lady that was helping you, did she help you with the kids? Yes. Were you there when the paramedics came? Yes. And I would imagine a lot of police officers and detectives came to the scene? Yes. And you gave a statement to the police? Yes. Can I have a moment, Your Honor? Okay. I don't have any further questions. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Any cross-examination? Good afternoon, Ms. Jacobs. Hello. How are you? Good. Now, since this incident happened, you've given several statements to the police, correct? Remember a couple of them. Right. You gave one the same night that it happened? Yes. And then you had a deposition months later? Yes. Right. So I'm going to talk to you first about the statement you gave the same night that this incident happened, okay? Right. Did you have a chance to go over those statements with the prosecutors before you came today? Yeah. Okay. And you had a chance to watch the video? Yes. Right. So let's talk about when you were coming to the Circle A store. You pulled directly into the handicapped spot, correct? Yes. There were other spots available? Yes. All right. There weren't a bunch of cars in the parking lot that prevented you from parking anywhere else? Yes. All right. And you pulled in and you said you came in for just a quick second. Right. You planned on basically just getting some drinks or Marquis getting drinks and then you were to leave? Yes. You kept the car in drive? Yes. And the car was still running? Yes? Yes. You have to verbally answer yes for the court reporter. Yes. The windows were up? Yes. You had tinted windows? Yes. Okay. And so you now pull into this spot. Marquise and little Marquise go inside of the grocery store. <clears throat> right. All right. By the time they get into the store, that's when Mr. Draca's vehicle pulls up. Right. All right. So Mr. Draca didn't see Marquise and little Marquise going into the store? No. Right. So had no reason to know that there was anybody else in this store? No. So you see this car pull up, and you said you see this man walking around the vehicle. Right. And he has on glasses. Yep. And Dark they're tinted tan. glasses. Yep. They were blue? Blue. All right. And he comes around, and he goes around to the back of the vehicle. Correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then he comes around, and he's looking around the front of the vehicle. Yes. And then you roll your window down. I cracked it. You, you cracked it, you cracked the window down, mm -hmm. and you start having a conversation. Right. Now, you said that you were scared. Yes, I was. All right. But nothing had happened yet. No, but he was walking around my car. Okay. You didn't try to pull your car away and try to leave? No. I told him once my family returns to the car, I will leave. Well, but before then, I mean, before then, before you even cracked the window down, you said you saw a, you know, a person who was suspicious walking around your vehicle, you got your two babies in the car, but yet you crack the window down. Yes. And you engage him in conversation. I just wanted to see what, you know, what did he need? Like, why are you walking around my car? Okay. All right, so granted, you did that. You pulled it down. You asked him, what's go you know, what do you want? Or he, either way, he says something. You try to crack it down and hear what he says, or you say something to him. And he tells you it's about the parking spot. Right. So at that point, you know it's about the parking spot. You could have just rolled your window back up, right? Yeah. Could have said, whatever, mind your business. Right? I basically said that. I basically told him to just leave me alone. Right, but you didn't roll your window up. Right. You engaged him in conversation. And not just conversation, you were arguing with him back and forth. Yes, because he was arguing with me. Right. And, and that's, that's generally how an argument goes. It's two people. One argues, the other argues, and you both are going at it. Right. And to be quite frank, he should have mind his business, right? 
Right. And that's how you felt. Right? right? And you wanted to relay that to him. Right. And he felt that you shouldn't be parking in the parking spot. Right. And so you guys are going back and forth. Now, he's outside of your car door, correct? Yes. He never reaches inside of your window. No. He never reaches inside of your door. No. And in fact, the window that has your children with it, that window's not down. No. And it's tinted windows. Right. All right. And so it's just back and forth, arguing, and he's pointing and talking, correct? Right. Now, from where you're seated in the vehicle, you can see the front entrance to where the door is. Yes. And Mr. Draca is kind of standing at an angle to you, arguing with you. Right. And his back is not, his back is to the entrance of the store. Correct? I mean, it's like towards the side of the right. store. So the door is to the left of him. Right. And, but you can see the door straight ahead. Right. And you make the statement, you want my man to F you up? You want my man to come here and F you up? Right? Something along those lines. I said, do you want me to get my man? Okay. Now, I want to talk about the statement you said that Mr. Draco made, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, now, you said that because you knew that your man would probably come and defend you. Right? Uh, yes. You felt like if you thought, if your man thought something was going on, he was going to come and do something. Yes, and I said that, you know, to get this man away from me. I thought that was going to scare him away. Okay. But going back to the beginning, you could have rolled your window up and just drive to the other side of the store, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, but you didn't do that. So you're yelling back and forth. And while you're seated still in your vehicle, you see Marquise coming out the grocery store. Yes. And when you see him, you open up the door and you get out the car. Yes. But you said you were scared. I was scared. Right. But you got out the car. Right. But you weren't scared anymore because you knew Marquise was coming. I mean, I didn't know what was going to happen. I just wanted this man to leave me alone. Right. But you got out the car when you saw Marquise coming. Right. Before that, you didn't try to get out the car. No. So now you see your man coming. You get out. Marquise runs up. Correct? Yes. And he shoves Mr. Draco to the ground. Yes? Yes. And Ms. Draco flew, I think in your estimation, it was about two feet? I don't remember how many feet, but... Right. It, wasn't, it wasn't a tap, correct? It was a push. Right. It was and a hard push. It literally knocked Mr. Draco off his feet. Right. Yeah, you saw that, right? Yeah. And... Right when Marquise did that, Marquise also made a step forward after he even pushed him. No. You don't recall that? No. You watched the video? Yes. Now, going back to Mr. Um, Mr. Drake, the whole time you're arguing with him, he never tells you that he has a firearm, correct? No. He never threatens you? No. He never said he was going to shoot you? No. He didn't put his hand on his hip and try to signal to you that he had a firearm. No. You guys are just having a plain verbal argument, difference of opinion. Right. That's really loud. Yes. And people are listening. Yes. And even when Marquise is coming, Mr. Draco didn't see him, correct? Yes. He was blindsided, correct? Yes. Because Mr. Draco was focused solely on you. Is right. that correct? Right. And, in fact, when you talked about, you said the word, you know, I retreated to the left and Marquise retreated. You never used the word retreat in any of your statements to law enforcement, correct? I don't recall, but I remember telling him we was, you know, moving back. Fair, but you never said retreated, correct? I don't remember. And, to be clear, Marquise never turned his back to Mr. Draco, correct? No. He never turned around as if going back into the store. No. And in fact, it was more like a slant, correct? Yeah. And in fact, you believe that it was Marquise backed up to see what he was going to do. Everybody was backing up. 
Everybody was retreating. Well, I'm talking about, I know you say retreat, but Marquise was trying to see what he was going to do, meaning Mr. Draco. He was Now, after Marquise shoved Mr. Drake into the ground, they were still pretty close in distance from each other, correct? Yes. And Mr. Drake actually falls on his butt. Yes. Now, Marquise was about 205 pounds? No. No? No. How much did he weigh? He was only 100 and something, like 190. Okay, about 190 pounds. Um, he was 28 years old? Yes. Okay. Pretty muscular build? Yes. Now, you told the state that after Marquise was shot and he runs in the store, you actually went to the left, closed the door, and then went into the store. Yes, I, ran ar I went around to the passenger side, wind my window up, and then I went in the store behind Marquise. And is it true that you immediately ran after Marquise? At first, I just went and winded my windows up. Then I ran after him. And just so I can be clear, when you were arguing with Mr. Um, Draco, you guys never touched each other. There was never any physical touching or anything of that nature? No. When you saw Mr. Draco pull out the firearm, it was pretty quick, right? Yes. All right. It was actually really fast. Yes. And this entire time, Mr. Draco still has on his blue tinted glasses. Yeah, and a hat. And a hat. Now, I want to talk about that statement you said that Mr. Mr. Draco said, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, and he, you want to fight? You, so what was that statement that you said? I said, do you want me to get my man? And he then, says yes, if he wants to fight. Okay. Now, do, did you look over the transcript of your interview from the night of July 19th? Yes. All right. And I'm going to give you, if I can get it. Sure. Now, at some point during this, um, you had testified earlier that you were scared of Mr. Draco, correct? Yes. When he was walking around the car. Yes. Right? But, in fact, you actually said that you were about to put your hands on him. Yes. All right? That's not the statement of a person who's scared, correct? I mean, yeah, I was still scared because I wanted him just to get away from me and my babies. But a person who's scared doesn't say that they want to put their hands on somebody, right? No. With their two kids in the car, correct? Correct. Where well, they could have rolled their window up. And not even, you didn't even have to move the, park, move the car at the parking spot. You could have just rolled the window up, correct? Yes. But you didn't do that? No. I'm sorry? No. Give me one moment, please. Ms. Jacobs, you knew that Marquise was going to come out and fight when he was coming out that store, correct? No, I didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, because you essentially said you want, my, want me to get my man, right? I just wanted him to get away from the car. Right. By opening your door and getting out? No. You did get out the car, right? Your Honor, I'm going to object. This has been asked and answered several times. I have no further questions at this time. Wait, one moment. Did you know that Marquise was on drugs at no. that time? 
No. No. Okay. No further questions. Thank you. Redirect. Very, very briefly. You were asked several times about uh, you know, what was happening in, in the car. If you were going to get out and stay in. What was the reason you wanted them away from the car? I just wanted him to leave me and my babies alone. And if anything bad was going to happen, it was going to happen outside that car and not inside the car with the babies. I don't have any further questions. Thank you, ma'am. You can step down. State, please call your next witness. The state would call Robert Castelli. Do you solemnly swear or inform the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yeah. Sir, if you'll step this way, have a seat, pull yourself up to the microphone and speak in a loud and clear voice for court, please. Hello. Thank you. Good afternoon. Can you please turn to the jury and state your first and last name and spell your last name for the court reporter? Robert Castelli, C-A-S-T-E-L-L-I. Okay. You don't have to tell us exactly where you live, but uh, in what part of the county do you live? Clearwater. Um, are you currently employed? Yes. And where do you work? Frenchy South Beach. Uh, I'm going to turn, turn your attention back to July 19th, 2018. Uh, were you working at the same place back then? Yes. All right, how long have you been working there for? About a year. Okay. Um, about 3, 3.15, did you find yourself at the Circle A store, uh, 1207 Sunset Point Road? Yes. All right, let's talk about what you did before you got to that store. Um, tell us a little bit about your day. Uh, I took my girlfriend to work in the morning. I dropped her off. Uh, I met my dad for lunch. And I uh, actually brought food to my girlfriend to her job. And then on the way back is when I stopped at the store. Okay. Uh, what city uh, was your girlfriend working in? Palm Harbor. Um, on your way back, I guess, do you live near the Circle A store? Yeah, I used to live uh, right on the corner, Sunset and Douglas. Okay. So I'd imagine you've been to that store many times? Yes. Um, when you went to the store, uh, were you by yourself? Yes. Where did you pull in, you know, parking lot-wise? Where did you pull in when you got to the store? Uh, basically directly in front of the store, uh, door. Okay. Front door. So when you're, you know, when you pull in, you're facing in front of the store and the, the, the door's right there. Correct. All right. Um, when you pulled in, how were your windows, meaning were they up, were they down? Uh, my driver's side window was up. My passenger side window is actually uh, broken. It doesn't go down all the way, so it actually stuck up about two inches. So that was up a little bit. Okay. When you pulled into the parking lot, did you immediately get out of your car or did you stay in your car? Uh, no. When I first pulled in, I was actually getting change out of my cup holder, and I was probably in the car for... A minute or two. All right. While you're in the car for a minute or two, did you hear anything outside your car? Yes. Right. Did you hear that noise coming from your driver's side or from your passenger side? Passenger side. Um, was it uh, something that caught your attention? Yes. All right. Tell the members of the jury why it was that it caught your attention. I just noticed when I pulled up, I heard screaming. Uh, I saw a man basically yelling at a car, and it just caught my attention. All right. So we're going to talk about this man uh, for, for a little while. Uh, the man. Do you see him in the courtroom here today? Yes. Okay. Can you point to him and identify him by some articles of clothing and the color? Blue shirt, blue tie. Bluish. May the record reflect the witness that identified the defendant, Michael Draca? It shall so reflect. All right. So you said that you saw a man that you just identified as the defendant. Um, where was he in relation to this car? Uh, right in front of the driver's side All window. Right. And where was this car parked? Which parking spot? Uh, it was in the handicapped spot, uh, basically facing me. Did you have a clear view from your car? Yes. All right. So you heard it and you can see what was happening. When you first heard the yelling, was it one person or, or two people? One person. All right. And, and who was the one person that was yelling at this time? Mr. Draco. All right. So the defendant's yelling at what? Basically the car? Yes. All right. And, and was the window up at that time? Yes. Did you see any movements or mannerisms that the defendant had when he was up there yelling at this car? Yes, he was pointing at the window. Okay. And again, this is loud enough that it, it caught your attention? Yes. All right. So what did you do? Did you keep looking over in that direction? 
Uh, I mean, I basically was listening while I was fumbling for change, and then once I got out of the car, you know, I was still listening, and it intensified. Okay, so let's talk about that. You get out of the car, and what do you see? Do you, is the window still up, or is it coming down? Uh, once I got out of the car, uh, the window was down. I noticed there was a black woman in the car, and that's when I was more uh, curious to what was going on. Okay. Um, were you concerned for her? Yes. Why was that? Because uh, he was shouting very loud, and I could tell he was very upset. Okay. Um, did you hear her start, I mean, we, we play semantics, talking, conversing, yelling, what did what, you hear? Uh, yeah, once the window went down, I heard an argument. Basically, it was a screaming match between the two parties. Um, could you hear the black female telling the defendant anything about leaving her alone? Uh, I mean, it was just a gist of, I mean, at that point, I wasn't listening to everything. I just noticed yelling. Uh, it was more just like mind your own business and it was just an argument going back and forth. Okay. Um, so it, it wasn't leaving me alone. It was her telling the defendant to mind your own business. Yes. All right. Could you hear every single thing that was being said between them? No. All right. Uh, so you could hear certain things of what was being said, but not all of it. Yeah. I mean, it was a screaming match. So, uh, you know, both sides were going back and forth. So I was only hearing bits and pieces of what that was actually being said. Okay. And at this time, the black female was inside the car? Correct. Um, based on what you saw, were you still concerned about what was happening out there? Yes. All right. Um, and what were you concerned about? Uh, just, I didn't know what was going to happen next, so I just, uh, didn't know, you know, obviously it's a male yelling at a female, so I was concerned. Okay. What did you do? Uh, when I opened the door, I, I, uh, told the clerk that there's an altercation outside, you might want to get involved. All right. So when you opened the door, did the volume of what was happening outside change in any way? Uh, by that, by the time I got out of the car and the window was down, it was an all-out screaming match. All right, so very loud. Yes. When you went into the store, could you hear the defendant's voice as well as the female's voice? Yes. And then you went and you told the, the cashier, and, and again, what did you say? Uh, there's an altercation outside. You might want to get involved. Right. While you're in there, can you hear both the female voice and the male voice? Yes. There's a point in time when a customer in there goes outside. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And was that customer a male or a female? Uh, when customer, you mean the woman that came out of the store? The, uh, the, the Someone ended up being shot, obviously, right? Oh, the, yes. Okay. It was a male. I'm sorry. Okay. And was it a white male or black male? Black male. When you went in to tell the cashier, was the black male close to you? He was at the counter. Okay, so he was actually in front of the cashier that you were saying there's an altercation outside, you might want to get involved. Correct. Right. Obvious to you that that black male heard what you had said to the cashier? Yes. Right. After you said what you said to the cashier, what did that black male do? Uh, he just put his things on the counter, and then I saw him walk out of the store. Okay. And again, while you're there, you can hear what's happening outside still? Yes. Um, so the black male goes outside. Do you go to the door? Yes. And while you're standing at the door, do you hear anything happening in the same area? Yes. All right, and what do you hear? Still a screaming match. Uh, I heard her say, wait till my man comes, he's going to handle you. All right. Now, when this happens, is Mr. McLaughlin walking down the sidewalk? Yes. And as he was walking down the sidewalk, is there a point in time when the female uh, gets out of the car? Yes. And now when she's out of the car, is she close to the defendant? Yes. Okay. And it goes both ways. They're both close to each other, basically, right? And your leading commentary as well goes both ways. It's not a question. Yeah, I'll, I'll rephrase it. When the female comes out of the car, are, is the defendant and the black female close together? Yes. And you can see that? Yes. And between you and what's happening is this black male? Yes. When you're outside, do you see the black male push the defendant? Yes. Prior to the black male pushing the defendant, uh, does he scream any threats? And by he, does the black male scream any threats to the defendant? No. Does the black female um, go up and try to attack the defendant? No. Um, right before the black male pushes the defendant, what's the black female doing? Uh, she was just standing there. All right. And once the black male pushed the defendant down, 
Did anyone say anything at all to anybody? No. Was it completely quiet? Yes. So obviously there were no threats? Nope. The defendant's not saying anything at all? No. After the defendant is on the ground, what happens next? Uh, he basically rolled on his right side and uh, pulled the gun out. All right, let's talk about that. When the defendant fell on the ground, did you hear any, any words, you know, ow, or pain, or anything along those lines? No. Okay. Did he voice in any way that he was injured at all? No. Okay. And I don't mean God and said, ow, I'm hurt, but I mean when someone falls, if they're injured, some noises are made, anything like that? No. Did you watch him take out his firearm? Yes. Did he have any difficulty pulling out that firearm? No. Okay. Um, was it a, a, a you know, one swift move? Yeah. Okay. Did he fumble with the firearm at all after being pushed to the ground? No. Okay. The, the firearm didn't fall out of his hand? No, nope, very smooth. Okay. Didn't have any difficulty grabbing it or aiming it? Nope. Was he able to right himself? Was the defendant able to get himself up in a position with that firearm? Yes. Any difficulty doing that? No. When you saw the firearm come out, what did you do? I uh, took steps to my right and got between two parked cars. Okay. And it's going to be a very obvious question. What's the reason that you got yourself you know, with parked cars? Did not want to get shot. Okay. Even though there were parked cars between you and the defendant, did you have a clear view of what was happening? Yes. Okay. When that firearm came out, you went to where those parked cars were. Did you see what that black male did? Yes. Okay. Tell the jury what the black male did. Packed up. Okay. Was that when the firearm was pointed at him? Yes. Did you see him go forward at all? No. Did you see him make any movements at all towards the defendant? No. Okay. What did he do? Packed up. Okay. Could he keep going back? Uh, the car was behind him, so no, he couldn't go any further back where he was. Okay. When he couldn't go any further backwards, what did you see that black male do? Turn towards the store and then went towards the front door. Okay, so did you actually see his body actually turn to go towards the store? Correct, okay. yes. Did you see his feet turn to go towards the store? Yes. You didn't have any difficulty seeing that? No. Did you see where the black male was looking, where his eyes were focused? Towards the gun. Okay, so based on what you're describing, he was turning to leave, but he was looking at the firearm. Correct. Did you see that black male get shot? Yes. What did the black male do after he was shot? Uh, he held the wound and ran into the store and collapsed. Once you saw the victim run into the store, what did you do next? Uh, I basically kept my eyes on the shooter, and uh, I slipped to the corner of the building, called 911. All right, let's talk about uh, the defendant a little bit. When he got up and took that firearm out, based on what you saw, mm -hmm. uh, did he appear to be overly shocked? No. Okay. Did he appear to be disoriented? No. Confused? No. In an incredible amount of pain? No. <clears throat> After the shot, did you keep your eye on the defendant? Yes. Okay. And when you called 911, did you keep your eye on the defendant? Yes. Okay. At that point in time, did you seem overly shocked? No. Did he seem as though he was in an incredible amount of confusion? No. Disorientated? No. Nope. Dazed? No. Did he have any difficulty walking around? No. Did he fall on the ground? No. Where did you see him go? And by him, I mean the defendant. Where did he go? Uh, once I went to the corner of the building, I uh, kept an eye on him. I saw him get up calmly, walk to his truck, and put the gun away. Okay, let's talk about that. Did he have any difficulty opening the truck? No. Was he off balance? No. Did he have any difficulty based on what you saw putting the firearm in there? No. After he put the firearm in the truck, what did he do? Uh, people were pulling up to the store, so he was actually telling them not to come in because he had just shot somebody. And then he was also uh, muttering things to himself, uh, you know, he shouldn't have pushed me down, what you think was going to happen, not full sentences, just phrases really, but he was uh, visibly irritated. Okay, so uh, he was muttering to himself, uh, what did he think would happen, 
for pushing me now, basically. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And he said he wasn't talking to anyone, but he was kind of... He was kind of pacing, himself. like a car would pull in, he would tell him to go away, and then he was just walking back and forth, just saying stuff to himself. Okay. And uh, you said that when people were coming into the parking lot, what was he doing? What was the defendant doing? Telling him, can't come in, I just shot somebody. Again, didn't seem uh, confused? No. Dazed? Nope. Disoriented? Nope. Based on what you saw, did that black male have any weapons on him? No. Make any moves that he was about to run and attack the defendant prior to being shot? No. to uh, prepare prior to testifying today? Yes. And did you have an opportunity to read uh, a statement or a transcript from uh, the sheriff's office? Yes. And when you were interviewed by them, that was videotaped? Yes. All right, and you read a transcript of it? Yes. Did you have your deposition taken in this case? Yes. All right, did you have an opportunity to read that deposition? Yes. All right. And... So you had an opportunity uh, last week to read your deposition for the first time? Correct. When you read your deposition, did you see an error in there? Yes. Okay. And explain what the error was. Uh, basically, it was a part where I had numerous times said that what I heard was, wait till my man comes, he's going to handle you. But this one uh, statement in the report said, uh, I'm going to F you up, basically. And that was just my interpretation because I had said it so many times, so many, you know, uh, and that was just my interpretation. I wasn't, I never actually heard that. It was just me saying that's what I interpreted that being, that phrase being. Okay, so several times in the deposition we're talking about, it's not a report, you indicated about the handling part, correct? Correct. And in this one occasion, um, it was something to the effect of, um, that, like, a, like a curse word, going to F you up. Okay. Yes. And what you're telling the jury is that was your own personal impression of, of what was being said. Of what that statement was. I didn't actually hear her say those words. Okay. All right. Um, and let me ask you this. When you were outside, and I know this will sound kind of silly, were you yelling over to the defendant, watch out, this is what's going to happen, or any words like that? No. Okay. Did you have any conversations at all with the defendant? No. Did you have any conversations, you know, while this whole thing was taking place with the black female? No. Any conversations with the black male that was shot? No. Okay. And you don't know any of those people, correct? No. You just happened to be there. Wrong place, wrong time. May I have a moment, Your Honor? You may. Nothing further. Thank you, sir. Cross examination. Actually, I did have just a brief couple of questions. Okay. When you looked over that deposition and you found that error, um, was there something that you filled out? Yes. Okay. And what did you fill out once you found that error? There was a paper in the back of the deposition where I was supposed to write anything, any discrepancy or errors that I saw. Okay. And um, then you signed a date of that yourself, correct? Yes. Did you write that whole thing out yourself? Yes. Okay. And then you, you gave it to the state attorney's office? Yes. Make sure that the defense got it, correct? Yes. So they were aware of it before the trial even started, correct? Yes. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Cross examination. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Castelli, good, uh, good afternoon. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you? Good. Mr. Castelli, just so that the, the jury can get a clear picture of this deposition process, what you're referring to is back in uh, December, uh, specifically December 7th of 2018. That's when you and I first met, correct? Yes. This deposition that we're talking about 
Um, it was yourself. I think I was present. I believe Mr. Schaub was present. Yep. Right? Perhaps a civil lawyer being present. You recall another one? I lawyer? believe so, yep. All right. And in that deposition process, sort of during the picture of this, you were placed under oath uh, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Correct? Yes. All right. This statement where you said, you agree, you said it in that sworn deposition that the young lady said from her car, my man is going to F you up. You did say that, right? No, I said my man is going to handle you, and then I said he's going to F you up basically, which was, if you read it, is just an interpretation of me saying my man's going to handle you. Okay, but the, my, my question was, did you say, in response to a question, when you have a chance, can you tell me what, I will. What page of mine you're on? Yes. Did you say at any point, he's going to F you up? Did you say that in response to, and what was, what was said? And then that. Judge, I'm sorry, page uh, 15, lines 10 through 12. Counsel can please show the deposition to the witness because I believe he was explaining it and it would further help the explanation if he would show him the deposition. Let me leave the foundation will go for that. All right. All right. Well, if you're going to impeach him with something, you do have to I will. allow him to look at oh, the deposition. I just want to make clear. Very good. Thank you. Did you say that Brittany Jacobs had said, that's all I'm asking, yes or no? Did you say that Jacobs had said, Your Honor, may we approach? Yes. All right, Mr. Uh, Castelli, if Your Honor may, this is my may I approach the witness. I'm going to show you uh, page 15 of the deposition that you and I, when we met back in December 2018, look at lines 7 through 12. If you don't mind, just look at that, read it to yourself. Let me know if that refreshes your recollection about the Q&A that we had back in December. Now, do you recall the question being, line 10, when she stepped out of the vehicle, do you recall her saying anything, acknowledging there's my man, anything like that? Do you recall saying answer? No. She was just saying, quote, wait until he comes out. My man's going to handle you. He's going to F you up, period, end quote, basically yelling at him. Yes. You did say that, right? Okay. Yes. At any point, do you recall, and if I can show you the entire deposition, no, that was just my interpretation. Did you ever clarify that? Not at the time. Not at the time. All right, fair enough. That was back in December. This errata sheet that was referenced, December of 2018 was a deposition. This errata sheet was filled out on August 16th of 2019. Is that the sheet you're referring to? Correct. All right. Eight or nine months later. Correct. All right. At the your, your Honor, my objection would be this. It just looks like all of a sudden all these months went by when I, I think There's it no speaking objection. Oh, okay. Any speaking objection. All right. I think. Well, um, the timing of when the depots were available. Uh, all right. How about if we do that during redirect? Okay. Okay. Do you recall, and again, Mr. Schaub was present during that meeting? Yes. Yes. And he asked you some follow-up questions. Do you recall that? Yes. Right. At any point, did you stop to say, uh, that's not what I meant, or clarified it back then in December? No. All right. Did you, how often did you frequent that Circle A store? Uh, pretty frequently. Frequent. All right. Do you live in the community? Uh, not in that neighborhood anymore, but I did. Oh, back then? Yes. All right. And so you've been there often, and did you ever participate in any rallies and support of the McLaughlin family? No. Right. No rallies, no functions, no vigils, anything like that? No. All right. Do you even know, I'm just going to ask, do you know when these depositions were prepared? Transcribed? No. But even if you're saying that that was your impression, you're telling this jury that was your impression that Ms. Jacobs was letting Mr. Draca know that my man is going to F you up. That was now, my, my objection is speculation. It doesn't matter what was in Mr. Castelli's head. That was your impression, correct? It's my interpretation. Fair enough. When you say that Mr. Draca didn't appear to be shocked, you don't know Mr. Draca, correct? No. You don't know what he's like before a violent push or after a violent push? No. But you did see the violent push. Yes. All right. 
And at some point, though, you said that Mr. Draca appeared to be uh, kind of talking to himself. And, and your testimony is that that wasn't shock. That was after he got up and had done several things very calmly and then started muttering to himself. Uh, you're not, you have no medical training or anything like that? Nope. Let me back up a little bit now. Um, When you arrived, you heard the yelling and the screaming and the back and forth, correct? Correct. And you would agree it was back and forth? Uh, not when I first pulled up. When I first pulled up, it was him yelling at a car. All right. In fact, you use that term, yelling at a car, because even you couldn't tell if there was anybody inside the car. No, I couldn't tell. All right. The windows were tinted, and you couldn't see. Fair enough. But at some point, that window does roll down, and now it's not just some guy yelling at a car. It's two people yelling at each other. Correct. Correct? All right. And you heard the, the passenger side say, mind your own effing business. To that effect, it was a lot of screaming. I can't make exactly what was said. It was two people screaming at each other. Is it your testimony you do not recall Ms. Jacobs saying, mind your effing business? No. You don't recall it. All right. Counsel for the state, if you could refer to page 12 of the deposition, lines 21 to 22. Fine, may I approach? You're right. All right, independently, you just said you don't all recall her saying, mind your business. I'll show you this again. Take a look at page 12, lines 19, I'm sorry, 21 through 22. Read it to yourself and let me know if that refreshes your much. Recall that answer? Yes. Okay. Tell the jury, do you recall now whether or not she said, Ms. Jacob said to Ms. Drake, mind your, your own business? Can I explain that statement? Yes or no first. Uh, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Did, did you or did you not hear Ms. Jacob say to Ms. Drake, mind your effing business? Not in those exact words. I heard the gist of the argument was mind your own business. Right. <clears throat> Go ahead. Now, if not mind your own business, what, what did you hear that gave you the impression that she was telling Ms. Draca, mind your business? <clears throat> a screaming, <clears throat> excuse me, a screaming match. It was going back and forth. It was a heated argument. So I was hearing bits and phrases. I didn't get the full sentences. It wasn't like I was tr trying to listen to everything at the time. You would agree that Mr. Drake had never made any threats towards Ms. Brittany Jacobs, correct? Uh, he, was threat he was in a threatening manner towards the car, pointing at the car, yelling, screaming. I would consider that threatening. threatening. The question was, though, did you hear Mr. Drake specifically utter any threats towards no. Ms. Jacobs? No. And you would agree that when you came inside, um, Mr. McLaughlin rushed out of the store. Yes. And you would agree that he made a beeline for Mr. Draca and shoved him so hard that he threw him three to four feet. Yes. Right. And then you would agree that Mr. Draca landed hard on the ground. Yes. Right. And you would agree that based on your interpretation, it was about a two-second delay from the time that the gun was removed and the shot was fired. Yes. And if I may uh, approach the state. If I can have this marked uh, for identification defense exhibit number one. Okay. All right, if I may approach the witness. Thank you. So I'm going to show you what's been marked as defense exhibit number one. If you could tell me, if you tell me if you take a look at it, tell me if you recognize what that image represents. Uh, yes. What is it? Well, it's. Yes, myself, victim, shooter, and the black woman. All right. 
you want to, with the court's permission, I publish exhibit number one. Well, you're introducing it, right? Yes. We have no objection. Well, oh, I have to introduce it before we can publish it, so you're that's what I meant. Evidence, and then, uh, <coughs> Judge, may I? No, has it been accepted, Judge? I'm sorry. It has been accepted. Now you may publish. And my public, right? All right, Mr. Castelli, you indicated that you recognize one of these people, and if I may, is this you right here, sir? Yes. All right, and you would agree in that photograph, Ms. Jacobs is already out of the car. Yes. All right, and Mr. Glock is also uh, hovering over Mr. Draken. You know, yes. I, I'd object to defense counsel's characterization. I'll rephrase, Judge. Um, Mr. McLaughlin is near Mr. Draken? Yes. And you're, that's you in the background, so to speak, right? Correct. All right, in the video, you're wearing bright red shoes, correct? Yes. All right, and um, if I could ask, and maybe explain to the jury, where were you going? Between the two cars. I'm sorry? Wait, uh, where right. am I going in this frame? I think I'm going to my right. Fair enough. Just before that, though, when you saw Mr. McLaughlin, McLaughlin come out of the store, rush into Mr. Draco, push him down, what were you doing outside? Uh, I thought I was going to be breaking up a fight. When I saw him go, that's when I came out of the store. Right. In terms, we speak of, we spoken of impressions. Your impression was there was going to be a fight. Correct. Am I going to have a moment, Judge? Um, sir, did you, um, after the push, did you notice that Mr. McLaughlin uh, was lifting up his pants after the push? It was before the push. Before, okay. So, but you don't recall, even after the push, Mr. McLaughlin lifting up a second time? No. Do you recall Mr. McLaughlin having his hands up before no. the shooting? No. Earlier really you had said that there was, um, the, the, what you heard Mr. Drake say about family members and all that, or uh, about the parking spot, did you hear him say something about his own family member being handicapped? Yeah. All right, I want to just briefly revisit the, uh, the deposition. The first opportunity that you had to read the deposition was just last Friday, correct? Yes. And then as soon as you realized the error, you let everybody know, correct? Yes. Right. And, and even before the trial started, you let everybody know? Yes. Right. Was it something that was hidden from anybody? No. And may I approach the witness with the deposition? Yes. Again, same pages that the defense counsel referred to. This is page 15, lines 10, 11, and 12. If you just look at that, when you were explaining your answer to the defense counsel just a couple minutes ago, you said that you said basically this is what it was, correct? Yes. Judge and judges, this conversation what's written in black and white, Judge. That's, that's going to be my point of why I'm asking these questions. Sorry. Right. Oh, okay. All right. So that's what you told the defense counsel, correct? Yes. All right. And it's exactly what you said in the deposition as well, correct? Yes. <clears throat> Now, you indicated that you thought that you were going to break up a fight, correct? Yes. All right, and that's based on what you witnessed by uh, everything in the parking lot, correct? Yes. Did you have to actually break up a fight? No. Why didn't you have to break up a fight? They, they got physical before that. Uh, I mean, the guy, there was so much distance, I didn't have to get between them. Once I saw the gun, I got it out of the way. Okay. There wasn't a fight because the defendant brought out a gun, right? Objection leading, Judge. Yes. Objection leading. Move to strike the answer, Judge. We don't do striking answers. Curative instruction. They don't do it here. Okay. Curative instruction. Strike answers from uh, a transcript. All right. It's sustained. But go ahead. Was there a fight that took place between the black male and the defendant? No. Okay. Did the black male take out a firearm? Yes. 
Once that happened, was everything basically over? Yes. Okay. But what did happen after he took the gun out? He shot him. And there was no fight then, was there? No. I don't have anything further. Anything else from the defense? Judge, just clarification. one clarification. I promise, Judge. So this jury is clear, Mr. Castelli. When you said basically yelling at him, isn't that what you said, basically yelling at him? In, in the deposition you're referring yeah. to? I was saying that the sentence before that is basically saying he's going to F you up was the interpretation. That's why I said basically at the well, end. But you didn't say basically he threatened her or she threatened him. It's basically yelling at him. No, I said he's going to F you up basically is exactly what I said. He's going to F you up. He's going to F you up basically is what I, is not what's written. Just can I approach him? Okay. Page 15, lines 10 through 12. Once again, sir, just read to yourself. Read in the street if you said basically he's going yelling at to him. F you up basically yelling at him is what I said. Fair enough. That's exactly what you said. Basically yelling at him. Yes. Oh, that's all I have. Thank you. All right, anything else from the state? No, you aren't. Good. Thank you. All right, sir, you may step down. Okay. All right. Um, I think we'll go ahead. Uh, and take a 10 minute comfort break at this point, and then we'll be back. All right, thank you. All right, we'll be in recess for 10 minutes.